So after some time where you haven't painted for a while, it might be hard to start. But it's always nice to just get outside and even close to home. This is my little garden with your pals and just enjoy staying in the moment and appreciating the fresh air and silence sometimes or whatever's going on and capture that in your heart. And you can always go back to uh, some tips on how to paint. Look for something that touches the heart. Walk, pray, stay. Yeah, stay a while in a place. Take it in. Start and you know, we can prepare the color and load the brush. Conduct an orchestra. Did I write that? <laughs> I guess I did. But you know, the landscape often does have its own music. And it's like these flowers here. When I planted the larger primroses, there was a bunch of rubbish here that I had to clean out. And it wasn't until I planted those that the smaller little primroses um, started to grow and it's almost like their presence uh, enabled the others to join them in a, in a song and so like these purple violets they might be like the violins and we got the bass in the back there and it, it's just a song of um, joy that that can speak to us and, and as artists we can capture it in our way so today I will start with uh, capturing a little bit of the gestures here with a pencil and uh, add some color with watercolor and we'll see what happens but I hope to bring some of this joy to you through my artwork. Let's see what happens. So I have my uh, watercolor squeezed and dried into this box um, that I can start to pre-mix some of the colors that I see there. And there's a lot of uh, brown or reddish brown in the soil there. So I'm getting that ready. Then I add a bit of ultramarine blue, which is a nice heavy pigment that spreads nicely. I can get some deeper tones there. You can always add just a brown and get that ready. And so I have this nice range of earth tones and I'll leave that brush and then get another brush for the flower colors. So maybe there's a bunch of violets. They start off nice and pink, then they go um, into a violet and a deeper violet. So we get these rich, very rich, beautiful tones with different blues. That's cerulean blue there with that one. And we have those ready and I can keep that on a different brush. And then I can get some greens. Now greens are tricky. You know, they mix, uh, you mix yellow and blue together and you get a lovely vibrant green, but that's sort of brighter than I see anything there. So, what I can do is just get keep those for highlights and then just add a bit of red to it, a little bit of magenta. Just tone it right down and make a muted green. Or you can always pick up just straight sap green right there. It's a lovely earthy green, vibrant still. So again, to tone it down, I'll just add a little bit of the opposite, that red, and bring it deeper. I can always add a blue, ultramarine blue and green together, and then I have a rich forest green. And so those are ready to uh, work with and have them play out a, an orchestra, a song. So the first gestures can be anything. It could be the flower petals or the, the soil. And I'm thinking to wet the paper first and then maybe start with the ground. And so when I wet the paper, I can just brush it on or I can use a paper towel and kind of soften the fibers a little bit. You don't want to rub too hard but there's a, often a sizing on these papers that you can remove with water and let it dry even a bit. I don't want it too wet on wet but it never hurts to see how the colors will mingle and enjoy their um, flow on a wet paper. So let's See what happens. So we got a nice uh, deep earth tone here that I could just start adding in, in the background here. And let's see how far I can carry this brush. This is a round brush with texture across this page. 
it's not going too far. So this is where it helps to get a bigger brush and, and adjust your some pattern in. And I'm going to paint around the, the violets first like this, you see. I'm going to get a negative shape happening. You can see it sort of formed there. I always like to try to get the negative patterns, meaning the cutout of the florals right from the start, just to get a gesture of that, what I feel is happening. Okay, love ultramarine blue, so let's just sweep that across the, the page and uh, get that flowing. You know, maybe that's... And I don't mind those drips, you know, let, let the freedom of the paint speak to me so that I can bring that freedom with the pigments onto this work. I like to really slop this on, this wet on wet gesture. Now I might, while it's wet, um, let's see, get some of this bright, vibrant magenta flower in the back there. So unfortunately it's quite wet on the paper now and I can't seem to get it to dry out here. It's uh, But that doesn't mean I can't add a few brush strokes of dark to push some of these lovely colors out. And we can also lift. So I haven't added the green yet because I can add that accent as an accent color later. I'd rather get these uh, blue and purple flowers in there. So now I'm just gesturing these little violets, the primroses or whatever. They feel like they're round but they actually little accents of yellow. So I'm gonna bring it from orange, orange yellow to a vibrant yellow. And And what I see here is some opportunities to push edges. So you just kind of outline a few of these different things. But again, I'm just trying to get the gestures. So I don't want to be too obvious. There are white flowers, so maybe I'll leave those as white. Now you can glaze. You see, glazing is just going back over, just gently with a uh, not too much pigment, a little bit of water, and let some of that shape come through. And sometimes just a hint of that. without overdoing it. Sit back, enjoy the colors, the play, and be thankful for the day.